Hello, friends. I often talk about the renewal of Judaism, how rabbis and other Jewish leaders have the sacred responsibility of updating parts of our tradition in our time. The purpose of this is to keep our spiritual practices relevant and in touch with our people while being aligned with our tradition. It's, I know it's not always clear what this means, so I'd like to provide some examples that illustrate ways in which we do this today. This past week, I had the honor of conducting a conversion ceremony for a member of our community. Now, I've had the privilege of supervising this process for many members of our community over the years. I'd like to share how some of the developments in this process are rich examples of renewing Judaism in our time. Most Jews don't realize that for a good part of our history, as part of being proud Jews, our people actively proselytized. We were not shy about recruiting people to become Jewish. However, in parts of Christian Europe, it became a capital crime to convert from Christianity to Judaism. There are documented cases in which Christians pretended to convert to Judaism only to trap rabbis and other Jewish leaders who paid the price with their lives. There developed a fear and recalcitrance on, on behalf of Jewish authorities to engage with Christians who expressed a desire to convert to Judaism. It became a tradition that if someone approached a rabbi to convert, the person was to be refused three times before being taken on as a potential convert. This overt resistance to conversion was a clear response to the historical reality of the people who lost their lives supporting conversion to Judaism. This tradition of refusal and resistance is still practiced even to this day. It's time for us to let go of the historical trauma around those who generally wish to choose Judaism. I remember about 20 years ago when the leader of Reform Judaism, Rabbi Alexander Schindler, may his memory be a blessing, began urging Jewish communities to adopt a more positive posture towards proselytizing and actively recruiting people to become Jewish. There was tremendous blowback. I believe that we've sufficiently healed from this old trauma, and the renewal of Judaism in our time demands that we let go of this resistance and position of refusal towards those who express an interest in choosing Judaism. It is time for us to be more welcoming and to do more positive outreach about our beautiful faith tradition. There is another aspect to renewing Judaism connected to conversion. In the Orthodox world, choosing Judaism means observing Jewish law, keeping kosher, and more strictly observing Shabbat. Orthodox conversions involve assembling a Beit Din, a tribunal whose job it is to examine whether the convert sufficiently, is sufficiently observant of Jewish law to be accepted as a Jew. For a vast majority of Jews who do not see themselves as, as bound to traditional Jewish law, we, are no longer, we no longer need to examine potential converts regarding their level of observance. Most non-Orthodox rabbis have a process that involves study and preparation that lasts anywhere from nine months to a year and culminates in a trip to the mikveh, the Jewish ritual bath, for a gentle and loving entry into Judaism. When potential converts even hear the word Beit Din, a rabbinical court, they panic and are terrified of being found unworthy. Most rabbis I've talked to about this say that their experience, like mine, is that people cho choosing Judaism often feel that no matter how long they have studied, 
they are not ready to formally convert. I tell every person who is exploring Judaism with me that at a certain point, after around a year of preparation, that we're going to pause and acknowledge their seriousness in wanting to become Jewish. We conduct this ceremony and celebrate their being welcomed into the Jewish people, understanding that their learning and their experiencing what it means to be Jewish will continue. As a result, as part of the renewal of Judaism, I no longer even use the term Beit Din, tribunal. Instead, I invite people into a Beit Chesed, a compassionate place of welcome, together with two other rabbis who will witness their journey into Judaism and affirm their desire and study to embrace Judaism as a meaningful spiritual path in their lives. From many potential converts, just hearing the words Beit Chesed and feeling the warm welcome in place of the austere and ominous tribunal alleviates unnecessary fears and makes their entry into Judaism a loving and compassionate experience. These are some concrete examples of how we are exploring the responsibility and privilege to renew Judaism in our time around those who seek to join our people. Stay well, stay safe, and be well. Shalom uvracha, peace and blessings.